Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Well, hi there, and welcome to the show. If this is your first time here, I am glad you're joining for the very first time. Thanks for checking out the show. Now, if you're returning, welcome back. It's always so great to have you here. Now, are you a part of the Live Full Work Fun community yet? If not, be sure to hop over to Facebook and join the Live Full Work Fun group. Well, you know what? Ten years ago, I can't believe it. It's been ten years ago. That's when I swallowed my fear and took the leap to go into business for myself. You know, indeed, I was given a little push. That's the truth. It was 10 years ago when my job as I knew it ended. I was at a crossroads. In my mind, I had two choices. I could go out and find a new job and just kind of go with the traditional or two, do something different. I was burnt out totally burnt out in the only career I knew. Yeah, I could do it and I could still do it for another 20 years until I retired. But oh my goodness, how I wished I could just reinvent myself. What would people think though, if I made the decision not to look for another job? Huh, I'd be unemployed. That's like a a label people placed on you. And in reality, the thought crossed my mind. Was I going through an early midlife crisis? My thoughts of reinventing myself just silly and I just needed to suck it up and just find a job and just go for it and just do the same thing that I've been doing for the past 20 years into the next 20 years before I retired. I went ahead and took that leap and went with these feelings that, yeah, I think I'm going through this early midlife crisis. But it took me a long while to feel comfortable with the fact that it's okay not to be traditionally employed. I came to realize that we are never, never too old to reinvent ourselves. That's why I was excited when I met Tom Claremont and I learned that he helps folks ready like I was back 10 years ago to create what he calls Life 2.0. My guest today, Thomas Claremont, shares great insights on how to create your version of Life 2.0. Tom's career path originally started in IT after the fourth company buyout. Both the culture and management went from bad to worse. I can relate. Well, at that time, he quit his job at the end of 2001 and started his own IT business full time in 2002. For nine years, he focused on his IT business. Now he operates it on a part time basis as he pivots into sharing his experiences by helping other small businesses as a startup coach. Tom offers coaching for those who are looking for clarity in purpose and strategy on how to start their own personal brand business. He has free tools on his website you can use immediately to help you on your journey to self employment. He specializes with the new, later-in-life entrepreneurs who get hung up on all the tech that's needed now to get started online. Well, let's get right into the conversation, shall we? Tom, I am so glad you're here. I've been looking forward to this conversation for weeks now. Yes, thanks. Thank you for having me. In the intro, I had indicated that you quit your corporate job back in 2001 and started your own IT company at the beginning of 2002. Was this your first experience in being a business owner? Yes, uh, it was. Well, you you know, I'm going to 
we'll skip the uh, I had a paper route <laughs> part, right? But it really gave me, you know, having that paper route when I was, you know, I don't know, 13 or 14, it really did give me a taste of mini entrepreneurship, right? Because back in the day when you, you we had to actually deliver the newspapers by hand or by foot, <laughs> You know, we also had to go door to door and, you know, collect the money and manage the money and manage our profits and, you know, give to the newspaper company their share and we keep our share. So it really gave me a taste. I think that's where the little entrepreneurial seed was <laughs> sort of planted, you know, into uh, my psyche. But yes, in the real sense, when I quit my job in 2001, that was the official launch of my entrepreneurial journey for sure. Sure. And my first episode of my podcast is don't do what I did, <laughs> right? <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of knew what I wanted, but I, I definitely knew what I didn't want. And I was, you know, telling this to my wife was, you know, this job went from bad to worse. And after the fourth buyout, the company management was just terrible and out of touch and it, they had this do it or be fired sort of mentality and it wasn't healthy <laughs> for me you know and so uh, i quit uh, i sort of you know didn't have that plan in place to you know i didn't have a foundation at all uh, i didn't have a, a, a plan in place i sort of worked through the business plan process in, in a way uh, later on but it wasn't really based on real <laughs> facts or analytics or, you know, what, what I, I had, you know, learned from a mentor or a coach. I didn't have a mentor or a coach, you know, and, and so I sort of wandered down the path of trial and error when I started. I, I made money because I, I already had sort of a following and, and I was very well known in the IT realm uh, for what I did. I made money right away. It's just that I could have made a whole lot more if I just had a decent plan in place, you know, and certainly was a way for me to step out of my comfort zone. A lot of times we're faced with that situation where, you know, we have sort of this area where we have to step out of our comfort zone and do something that we are not sure of or uncomfortable with. It can be daunting or, or frightening for sure, to do that and to venture out into something new. But sometimes, you know, we go through this life version 2.0 sort of scenario, right, where we're sort of faced with an event. And sometimes it's when I quit my job, I, it was a, a volunteer <laughs> event, right? I was in control of that event and I quit my job. But sometimes we go through the scenarios where it's forced on us, right? Sometimes we might be fired from a job. Sometimes the job leaves us uh, or, you know, Maybe there's an event like a death of a spouse or a significant other or uh, a divorce, which is in the same category as, as a death, in essence. I went through that and it was forced upon me. Maybe there's a retirement situation coming where you're going to be forced to retire and we have to step out of that comfort zone. I've sort of found that like we can if we're better prepared, you know, that's why I called my first episode Don't Do What I Did, because I wasn't prepared, right? But if we're better prepared, it makes that major life pivot easier or at least more manageable. It's not as uncertain, you know. The future isn't as so uncertain, you know. Absolutely. You had jumped in without a net. I, I did that as well. It was like sink or swim. I'm just I'm just doing it. That is fantastic. I mean, you you learned along the way. How long were you in the corporate world? You went through four buyouts. So goodness. Yeah. Um. Well, I was in IT for about 15 years. So you're in this industry in the corporate world for so many years. I had it in my head that I didn't really know what the opportunities were outside of what my career was. So I didn't even know what to look for or what to build. What I love about what you have to offer you, I mean, you started your IT company, but then you made another pivot. Now you do something different. 
I, I had another major life pivot with going through that divorce, uh, moving to uh, Virginia. I learned a lot of things along the way. I took, I, I sort of set my business on the back burner for a, a few years and learned a lot along the way, uh, continued in my personal development and uh, wanted to offer people more than what I did before. I wanted to, you know, knowing what I know now, I wanted to, you know, offer coaching and consulting in in the small business startup realm knowing what i know now based on what i went through 20 years ago i really wanted to niche into the space of helping those 40 and over in their life pivot because i i know what it was like back then some things are just very different than back then. So I know the differences now. And, and having my IT background, it really helps to pull it all together in today's realm when it's very, you know, IT driven nowadays, you know, because my, my realm isn't really, you know, how to get your brick and mortar business going. My realm isn't really, how are you going to sell things on Amazon? My realm is in the personal brand space for getting folks started uh, on their, you know, online personal brand business. But also, you know, some things are still the same. A lot of things are very different back from what it was 20 years ago, but some things are still the same, right? How we pivot, the mindset struggles that we go through, working through a business plan, you know, those things are still the same, right? I referred to the, the mindset issues of, of making a major pivot. You know, a lot, a lot can go through your head when you're, in, when you're faced with that life version 2.0 scenario. We can really struggle with believing in ourselves. When an event is forced on you, a significant event that forces you to pivot and change your direction, or, or even when you, you want to do it voluntarily, there can still be a lot of uncertainty certainty, a lot of things that stop us from believing in ourselves. And we can get stuck in this, the if only, you know, mindset trap, you know what I mean? If only I was younger, if only I had a degree, if only I had more money or more time, if only I had more support. We can have a dream for our future and, and what we want our life to be like, but yet for some reason, we're so easily able to talk ourselves out of the very dream that we thought up in the first place. When we get stuck in that if only mindset trap, we're sort of living with our past image, with our, with our past experiences. If we take what we know now and create a vision for the future, then we can put the past behind us and stop with that if only mindset trap and just venture forward with the new me, the new you. And we can have that confidence that we're a different person now. I'm not talking about faking it. I'm not saying fake it till you make it. Based on what we've learned and the person that we want to become, we can have that confidence to expand our comfort zone and, and step into new territory and really be the person that we ultimately want to be. Well, I love that you serve folks that are 40 and over making a life pivot because I am sure that you hear a lot, but I'm too old to do this. I'm too old to start my own business. What do you say to folks like, like that? A lot of people think that they're sort of starting from zero when they're really not. It's not about what you don't know. It's about what you do know. When you get to where we're at in life, you know a lot of things. So I, I don't really like to focus on what we don't know because that's a rabbit hole that doesn't end. There's always things you don't know. Don't let that stop you. If we all start with what we know with our skills and our knowledge and our experience, you know, we can take those baby steps every day. I, I like to say, look, in the course of a year, you can take one baby step toward your dream, toward your goal every day. And then at the end of a year, you've got 365 little baby steps towards your goal. If you want to go at that pace, at that little one step per day pace, you can and still make progress, significant progress in the course of a year. There's always somebody that can help you with what you don't know. So let's focus on what you do know and go from there because the world needs what you know. I'm sure you've experienced this as well. There's people out there right now, Gayla, that are paying good money for something that you can offer 
better, but they're paying more for because they don't know you yet. People need what you know. If you're listening and you're having some doubts or you're on the fence about what to do, the world needs you and what you know, and they will pay good money for it too. If you're in a job, you're fed up with it, and you know that there's something different. You want to pivot in your life. You had indicated it's like, hey, don't do what I did. Don't just quit and then find your plan. If we're sitting in a job that we don't like and we want something different, we want to start something on our own. Do you have any suggestions on what the first thing should we be doing? Your vision is really what's going to drive you to get out of bed every day, you know, and to have excitement about doing what you really love to do. I've been working on this course called Seven Basic Building Blocks for a Successful Online Business. And the first module is vision because it's so important to steer, you know, the ship in the right direction with with the vision to make sure that you're going to be motivated to do what you're going to do. I was talking to someone a couple of days ago and we had a short little Zoom session. He was transitioning out of the military and he had so many different things that he was looking at, you know, different business models that he was looking at. He was thinking about franchising in, in very different roles and or, you know, he, he just rattled off a bunch of different things. You know, I, I was like, pick something you're passionate about first, because that's going to be your motivation. Pick something that you really want to do. Do you really want to clean carpets in people's homes? Then do it. But if, if that's just something that somebody's pitching to you and you're not really motivated to be that service provider, then don't. And so find something to answer your question. I'd say that find something you're passionate about first and then go from there, because that passion, that, that will be your motivator to ride this job out for a little while while you work out the details to either see if it can be a side hustle that you're interested in doing or, or something full time. Because I've, I've done both full time and side hustle. Times change, economy changes, uh, your, your personal situation changes. You know, sometimes, you, you know, you're at the point where you have kids and you, you can't do something full time or the kids are out of the house now. And so now you can shift from part time to full time. Those events, you know, can change and your situation changes. But if your vision, if your passion is still the same, you, you can work out whether you want to do it full time or part time based on what you can do. I love that you say you've got to figure out what your passion is. But sometimes we're in a career that we're such in a fog that I don't know what the heck I can even do besides what I've been doing for the past 20 years. What I had found was that my passion wasn't necessarily a vocation. It was, I want to create a lifestyle where I am not bound by geography. I want to be able to work from anywhere. What does that look like? Here are my skills here, are my th you know, and that has been my navigator. Do you find that folks in our age group don't even know what personal branding is and feel a little lost? There's some there's some uncertainty about about personal branding, you know, and, and basically it's it's our identity. It's how we perceive ourselves and how we want to be perceived. And, and we both have had coaching under Mike Kim and he explains it very well. We've both read his book, You Are the Brand, and uh, I highly recommend it. It is a blueprint for branding, for sure, and you can keep that on the shelf to keep uh, referring to. It, it's jam-packed with great stuff. Branding is our identity in how we want to be perceived in our image, you know, and it's not, a, uh, it's not a phony image. It's an authentic image. Who we are, what we know, how we can help people. I think what clouds the perception perspective a little bit is is when we see the, the phoniness in the, in the branding, you know, and it sort of puts a bad taste in somebody's mouth. People are claiming to be who they're not, or they're just playing it up big, you know what I mean? So I, I think that might cause some uncertainty with what branding really is. When you were saying before about working from anywhere, there's certainly a way if you're a writer, if you want to be an author, or, you know, I had a, a Zoom session, a coaching session a couple of weeks ago with an author who wrote six books and has product line to go with three of the books. And I said, you know, you could teach people how to do what you did. Three children's books, three adult books that were in a series and product line to go with it. I said, you could not only, you can teach people, you know, how to be an author, 
You can coach people on how to publish. These are paperback books, hardcover books. And she sells them on, in different avenues. I said, you could really pivot from being an author to getting paid for what you know, right? It's much better to be paid for what you know and your brains than your hands and actually provor- performing a service. You know what I mean? So there's many ways of having that online portable business. You know, I have eBooks, you know, and if you're great at writing, I, I like to write. <laughs> If you're great at writing, you can, you know, be a ghost writer. I, I know ghost writers, they make good money, you know, and I interviewed one on, on my podcast. She makes very good money. She only needs three clients a year. And so th- that's a portable business. You know, you take your laptop and you can be anywhere and, and you can do ghost writing. If you want to write speeches for people, you can do that from anywhere. If you want to be a speaker, you can have an online business. You can also have your speaking gigs. It's all on your laptop. So there's there's many different angles to having a portable business for sure. And and I'm a big fan of, of that. You know, my goal is to be totally portable as well. I can see how if we're stuck in our own head of our limitations, to be able to have a conversation with, with someone like you, to vet out the possibilities because if you've been in a career for a long time, you only know that bubble. Well, I think fear gets in the way a lot of times for what we think is possible. I'm working on something now to help with cures for the fear of failure. And the fear of failure can be a big hindrance to our success or stepping out of that comfort zone. But if we can visualize who we want to be and really get that in our head for the lifestyle we want to have, I mean, if retirement is coming and and you've got five, eight years left and, you know, you're sort of wondering how retirement's going to play out, you know, you you have some time to work through what you want to do, how you want to do it and how you want your life to be come retirement. So fear can really get in the way of a lot of things with with our success. If you visualize what you want to be, then it'll give you sort of that confidence to, uh, to venture forward. You had mentioned, or I've heard in following you, the term retiring with a purpose. Could you expound on that? When you were talking before about ha- having a job that you're not thrilled with, you know, and you sort of maybe grinding through, you know, day after day or year after year and sort of, you know, this is what I need to do to pay the bills. This is what I need to do to have, you know, medical benefits. You know, I, I get that. But there's still a way for us to retire with a purpose, as I like to say, because we still have the ability to do other things. You don't have to limit your identity to your job. If we expand our realm beyond our job, our identity is not our job. Our job is not our our identity. Our identity is what we choose it to be. Our future is what we can choose it to be. A lot of times we wander into things that end up working out. You didn't land where you are now from point A to point B, right? It was a series of steps, a series of decisions. You try something, it didn't work. You try something, it works. You try something else, it's either going to work or not work. You make a decision, you decide you're going to go in a different direction or not. If it works, you keep going. If it doesn't, you try something else. We normally wander into a lot of things we go through in life, even on the personal side, with the decisions we make, with how our lives are, with who we're with, what school to go to, what degree to pick. Sometimes we know exactly what we want. Even my wife thought she knew exactly what she wanted to do when she was studying physics in Brazil. She thought she wanted to do research. She was doing research. She's like, okay, I'm a researcher, nuclear physics researcher. That's what I want to do. But then she stepped into the classroom and was a teacher's aide for a little while and said, you know what? This is what I want to do. And now she's been teaching physics for decades, you know, and so we sort of wander through a lot of life without intention. You you figure it out as you go along. If you can expand your realm of thinking beyond your job and think, you know what, maybe I want to do pottery. Maybe I want to have a a ceramics business, you know, and and you love ceramics. Maybe you, you want to paint. It's okay. Do what you love to do. Retire with purpose is just you're retiring from the workforce, from the corporate merry-go-round we all had to go through. But you, you have a new focus in your life by doing things that you really want to do. Nice. 
So in growing your business, what do you consider your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is is something I, I talked about already, you know, the, the mindset issues of believing what's possible. You know, I struggle with this. I'm not an all-knowing guru. You know, it, it's how we're made. We struggle with our limitations. We struggle with what's possible. You know, we struggle with risk. So that to me is my biggest challenge is getting out of my own way. What is it that keeps you going? Is it worth it? What motivates me is, is the vision that I have, the visualization that I talked about before of what I want, of how I want to retire with purpose. When I say retire, you know, <laughs> that's not an ending for me. I don't use that word as an ending. It, it's, you, you know, the, the world likes to use that word as a sort of a, a shift, you know, and so I got to come up with a better word <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the world uses that so much. Yeah, you know, and, and w w when you're 60 or 70 or, or 80, you don't have to stop. You know, you do what you can do. My, my wife isn't stopping. When when they make her retire from teaching, she's not stopping. We're we're talking about how she's going to continue with you know maybe having online courses or or in you know venture out and and still be a, a physics teacher with an online course. Hey, she could do it in Portuguese. You know what I'm saying? So she can do it in two languages. So her possibilities are still there, no matter how old she is. The perception of the word retire does mean stop. And that's just kind of a, a, a sad thing. I love your term, life 2.0. I mean, we can pivot however many times we want to. It's our life that we can live. And I think that it's, it's wonderful. As we kind of wrap up this conversation, Tom, I was wondering, do you have a favorite resource or book that has really made a difference for you professionally? Right. And, and, and Mike Kim's book is very recent. It just came out last month, uh, You Are the Brand. Before that, w what impacted me a lot was uh, Adam Markle's book, Pivot. It really helped me to understand, you know, how to sort of shift from, shift in life. He just wrote a great book. Nice. Have, you know, you know, the art and science of reinventing your career in life. And so that's, that's another book that I would recommend as well. So those two were, were, were huge for me. I've really, truly enjoyed our conversation today, Tom. Yeah, and it was fun. I love it. And how can people, besides your podcast, how can people stay in contact with you? So my website is tomclaremont.com, uh, C-L-A-I-R-M-O-N-T, tomclaremont.com. And the podcast is, is on the website as well. But it's distributed automatically to all the major um, podcast platforms. So that's the best way, my website. Excellent. I'll be sure to have all your links in the show notes so everybody can have quick access to them. So thank you so much for joining me. Gayla, thanks for this time. It was, it was fun. Well, thanks for being here with me today. Now be sure to scroll down to the show notes for all the resources Tom mentioned, as well as the links on how to follow him. Now, have you ever been at a crossroads that left you wanting to reinvent your version of life 2.0? Or maybe you're on your version of life 3.0 or 4.0. Well, let's continue this conversation. Hop over to Facebook and share your crossroads experience and what you did in that experience. What was your decision? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Go over to Facebook and share your experience in the Live Full Work Fun Facebook group. Now, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'd love for you to do me a little favor. Please share this episode with one person who you think may find it helpful and enjoyable. Just text them the link. Well, thanks for listening. And until next time, have a fantastic week. Live full, work fun. Work fun.